Let's go and have a look now at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and what he told us about this life. It is in Surah Al-Baqarah and other surahs like it. You all know the story and the event of when Allah created Adam and told the angels to bow to Adam. You all know that story? We all know that story, alhamdulillah. Let's analyze it for a second. And I'll just go in the English, inshallah, first. In chapter 2, verse 30, Allah says, Just think, when your Lord said to the angels, Lo, I am about to place a vicegerent, vicegerent on earth. Can you say that word? Excellent. 10 out of 10. I'll tell you what vicegerent is. You can say it. Vice gerent. Vice gerent on earth. The angel said, Oh Allah, will you place on it one who will spread mischief and shed blood while we celebrate your glory and extol your holiness? He said, Surely I know what you do not know. Hmm. I don't know if people read that verse and think deeply in it, or do you just pass by it? Because in this is the answer to everything in our life. Listen to it carefully. First of all, Malak, angel. In the Arabic language, Malak uh, uh, means message bearer. Malaika, plural. Message bearers. Which means that angels are not abstract, uh, depersonalized beings. They have a personality. They have a life. Um, they're not just forces that just f fly around. They are beings with a personality, as I said, of their own. And they are employed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the administration of his universe. They are his faithful servants. So they have a personality and they can choose to obey or disobey, contrary to what people say. They say that angels have no free will. Actually, they do have free will. Angels have free will. But what they don't have is desires and temptations. They don't have hawa. They don't have... Um, uh, those desires that humans have. It's the desires that make us go astray. And that is why they're obedient and they choose to obey Allah. So, he said, I'm placing a vicegerent on earth. A vicegerent, a khalifa. Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. A vicegerent is a deputy, a person who acts in the place of a ruler or a governor or a sovereign. Who is that person whom Allah is going to place on earth as a deputy, a person who acts in the place of a ruler, the ruler is Allah. Who is he placing? You and me. As what? We are the deputies and the ones who act under the rule of Allah. On behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have certain duties and powers in this life. Yeah, and that's why Allah said in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam." We have certainly honored the children of Adam. Allah honored us. And that is why Allah said to the angels, bow to Adam. Now they said to him, Ya Rabb, our Lord. Not, not that they opposed him. They just said, Ya Rabb, what's, what's the wisdom behind making a new creation on earth? And a vicegerent. Someone who's a deputy of you, Ya, ya Rabb, on earth? I mean, if, if you're after glorifying you and everything to be pure, here we are. You know, we're already pure, my Lord. We pray to you, we, 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 nusabbihu bihamdik, we glorify your name, we're pure. You don't see us shedding blood, you don't see us doing corruption. I mean, if that's what you want, our Lord, I'm just paraphrasing what the angels mean. In other words, O oh Lord, if this is what you want, we're here, we're already doing that. Why would there need to be someone else? Where's the gap? Are we missing something? Have we done something wrong? If you realize, brothers and sisters, the angels lacked knowledge about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. They thought that Allah wants people to always worship Him and be absolutely pure with no problems. But they misunderstood. Who is Allah? I'll give you an example. I can't go into too deep. It's going to be very deep. But let me give you an example. Who is Allah? We know Allah's names and attributes. Among His names and attributes is Al-Adil, the just. How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to manifest this attribute of His, Al-Adl, without having vices, good and bad? 
adil, justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman, the merciful. Mercy is applied when somebody deserves to be punished. How is mercy going to be manifested in the world, for example? Allah is al-Khaliq, the creator. How is he the creator when he's not creating? So it's far beyond our mind. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he who he is. And there's a gap. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created these people, us, with free will, with desires, with temptations, with ability, with knowledge that the angels don't have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us in this way. Angels, because of lack of desire, they didn't really have free will. What does it mean, have free will? It means they didn't understand free will because they didn't have desires and temptations. When you have desires and temptations, it pulls you. It pulls you towards the wrong. And so now you've got to make decisions. Do you understand? Without desire, desires and temptations, decisions are easy. It's just uh, You already know where you're going naturally. But when you have a vice that's pulling you, you have to make a decision against it. And this is where your rank rises. And this is how you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who's already robotic or naturally like that, and a person who has a choice between tough times, challenging times, and easy times, and chooses to face the challenges and rise, is more beneficial and greater to Allah than a person who's naturally like that. A person who struggles and strives against odds to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they go through pain is higher in the eyes of Allah. And all of us are like that, insha'Allah ta'ala. It's, it's up to our choice. And it's only a short time. Then we return back to Allah and there are no more challenges, no more tests. So from the beginning, Allah said, I'm creating those who will represent my laws in this earth on behalf of me. That's what, in other words, Allah is saying. Inni khalifa. So this world is not a paradise for us. Allah is saying, you have to work in it. You have to defend each other, protect each other, uphold the justice. Don't wait for me to bring down the angels to you. You are representative, so go. Go and uphold it and strive and struggle. And I will be with you, watching over you all the way. And nothing will go in vain. Whether it's death, whether it's sickness, whether it's hardship, whether it's loss of wealth, loss of lives, loss of wealth, uh, loss of uh, fruits, loss of anything. Anything. The Prophet wasallam told us a hadith in Sahih Muslim, there is nothing that a Muslim receives, whether it be worry, anxiety, fear, uh, uh, hurt from someone's hurtful tongues or anything like that, even the prick of a needle, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensates that person by forgiving their past sins and raising their ranks. Nothing goes in vain, brothers and sisters. And when someone can put that in their mind, suddenly qadr and qadr, qadr becomes so sweet. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you had a business opportunity and you were going to make a lot of money. That's what you thought. And then the opportunity passed you. And you said, oh no, another person took it. They made millions. I could have made millions. Allah replies to you in the Quran, Surah Al-Hadid, and he said, and he says, it is so that, meaning Allah puts you through calamities, it is so that you do not you do not, what's the word, stress, grovel, worry, uh, start to keep reminiscing over the past opportunities that didn't come your way. And also do not boast and go overboard over the blessings that what Allah made come your way. For Allah does not like every boaster, arrogant, ungrateful person. Qadr comes in and tells you, listen, if it passed you, alhamdulillah, this was, your rizq, this was what Allah subhanahu wa had written for you. If you got it, say alhamdulillah and don't boast. Just be normal. For you are in a test in this life. Everybody's going to leave everything behind anyway, except their good deeds and their bad deeds. They'll take them with them. Now, the story of the angels, moving on. Allah subhanahu wa taught Adam the names of everything, gave him knowledge. And then he said to the angels, tell me the names of all these things. Now there's angels that, you know, that, that, that know everything about climate, angels that know about gravity, angels that know about fire, angels that know about water. Each one's got their position. But their knowledge is only in that expertise. Now Allah subhanahu wa taught Adam alayhi salam the names of everything. 
So he became an all-rounder. And then he comes up to the angels and Allah says to the angels, tell me the names of all these things. Collectively, I mean individually, angels didn't know. Adam was able to say it collectively, which means that Allah created the human being to have an intellect to learn. And through the knowledge, you become a deputy. You represent Allah's rule on earth. But you need resources, you need help, you need knowledge. The angels were just dedicated to one or two things. The human beings have many tasks. And when you have many tasks, you are more important. That's why you honor people who have a more responsible job that has more accountability and you respect them more. That's how you rise. A person who's a footnote that just sits around, does nothing except for them, worries about what makes them happy in life is not an important person. It becomes a burden on community and society. You're not important. So that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him. And when the angels said, Oh, our Lord, subhanaka ma la ilma lana illa ma allamtana. Oh, our Lord, glory to you. We have no knowledge except what you gave us of knowledge. Allah then replied to them. He said to them, Alam aqul lakum inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. After he said to Adam, tell them all the names. And then he said to them, didn't I tell you that I know that which you do not know, O angels? What's Allah telling them? Remember the question they asked? Oh, our Lord, would you place on earth he or she who would shed blood and spread corruption while we glorify you already? So Allah says, I know that which you do not know. Meaning, I know in this creation and in the reason why I have created them. And I do know that there will be some shedding of blood and corruption. Yet there are things that you, O angels can never conceive or comprehend even if I told you. I know that which you do not know. So the angels then accepted it wholeheartedly and said, Our Lord, we only know what you taught us. We submit and we'll even make dua for your, creature, for your creatures. And the angels do make dua for us. It's in the Quran. We seek forgiveness for those who are on earth. So brothers and sisters, what, why did I say this story? Because... You know how the angels, they didn't know everything? They jumped to conclusions. The angels jumped to a conclusion. And they thought that Allah wanted this, but Allah told them, no, 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 no. There's a lot of gaps you don't know about. And if I told you, you're not going to get it. So how about you just take me as your Lord and be angels as you are and worship me and just trust me? They said, exactly. Forever. Forever. What does it mean to us as humans? It means the same thing, brothers and sisters. Things that happen in our life, whether they look good or look bad. Number one, don't assume about what Allah wants. You don't know. Number two, assume of Allah positively, that there is something good coming out of it. Assume that Allah has a plan for you or a forgiveness from you. And if it happens to you, you don't understand why, persevere through it. And know that this will, Allah will not let anything go in vain. He will reward you or forgive you. And it will all be counted for you as an investment for your hereafter. To the point where the Prophet ﷺ said in one authentic hadith, he said, on the day of judgment, there will be people who will look at other people who had gone through so much struggle and pain in this world and torture. And they would have not gone through the same torture. And when they see what rank Allah has given them finally, and the amount of rewards and pleasure that Allah has given them because of their patience and perseverance with calamities, the people who had lived in luxury here will say, we wish we can go back to earth so that we can be cut into pieces with a scissors. Whole body with a scissors. So that we can... Be successful as these people are successful and be patient. But you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give this. See, on the day of judgment, that becomes a privilege. Here, it looks terrible and horrific and nobody should go through it. But you see, on the day of judgment, Allah knows who would have passed it and who would have not. And so Allah doesn't give everybody the same tests and trials. Some people go through mental trials, some psychological and emotional. Some go through relationship breakups. Some people, they go through money problems, through food problems, through lives, through sickness, through death, through losses of some other sort. Losing your job, going into uh, problems in your life. Sometimes it's because of yourself as well. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you, okay, you still have a chance. Get out of it. Fix yourself and the road can come back. So brothers and sisters, this life is built on tests and trials and calamities. Allah never promised you a paradise here. This is not it. This is not it. Until you get that out of your head, you won't find that peace and contentment that you're looking for. <laughs>